Hello everyone, I'm Robert Adut with yaymath.org. Welcome back to Yaymath in studio, in this beautiful studio space with my friend Zach behind the camera. Today we're going to be talking about rational zero theorem, okay? Uh, it's it's kind of cool, it's kind of an interesting rule, and once you understand it, it'll help guide you in how to solve polynomials like this, okay? It's a very simple rule and it, it's a process. Um, this is all you do. What the rational zero theorem states is this polynomial having the three solutions that it has, if it were to have rational solutions, meaning numbers that are not square roots, numbers that are rational like 5 or 6 or 1 half or 0.3 or what have you, so not square roots, if they were to have rational roots, um, it would be a specific list that you can generate that are possible roots of this thing, okay? So we could actually generate a list of the candidate roots for this polynomial. The candidate root list uh, goes as follows. First, what we need to do is we need to establish all the factors of the constant, in this case, negative 10. So what are all the factors of 10? We put down 1, 2, 5, and 10. Cool, so those are the factors of negative 10. In fact, what we do for all these problems is, is it true that a factor of negative 10 or of positive 10 would be one or negative one, two or negative two, five or negative five, 10 or negative 10. So these eight numbers, one, negative one, two, negative two, and so forth, are all factors of negative 10, okay? Then we establish, let's actually write this, factors, of constant. Factors of the constant over here. Then we're going to get the factors of the leading coefficient. Factors of lead coef. coef. All right, the factors of the leading coefficient is here, factors of 3. So the factors of 3 include plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. And the list of all possible solutions or zeros of this polynomial that are the rational solutions is all these numbers divided by 1 and then all these numbers divided by 3. You basically do every combination you can. All of these divided by the first one, all these divided by the second, you just keep dividing everything that you can, every single combination. So we'll get all these divided by 1 is plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, no, not 3, plus or minus 5. In fact, some people actually like to write it like this, plus or minus all this stuff, to so make it simple and, uh, and neat for us. 1, 2, 5, and 10. That's all of these divided by 1. And now all of these divided by 3 would be 1 third, 2 thirds, five-thirds, and ten-thirds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times two. So that's uh, 16 potential solutions. So all the rational solutions that are possible are here. Keep in mind there's only three solutions. So if the solutions are rational, they're in this list. What it basically tells us is that a rational solution could never be like the number seven for this thing or the number eight, or the number one half, that if a solution were to be rational, it would be in this list. And what it helps us do is that oftentimes, we're asked to solve polynomials like this without the aid of a calculator to help us see the graph where it hits the x-axis, which would be insights into what the solutions are, right? The solutions are where the graph hits the x-axis, because that's where y is zero, something like this, one, two, three. So these would be solutions. If I were to graph this in the graphing calculator or any other function, I could see solutions here, here, and here. And that could help me guide uh, my process in finding all the other solutions, if there were more. But sometimes we don't have the calculator, so we'd say, okay, if the solutions exist that are rational, they're in this list. I'll show you what I mean. We're gonna solve two. We're gonna solve two. Oh, what's interesting is that the books they call the uh, constant, the P, 
and they call the leading coefficient Q. That's what they do. So when I help students with this stuff, they're like, oh, is this the P over Q thing? Which I kind of think is either funny or sad. They're like, oh, the P over Q thing. You just like name it this random stuff. Um, I don't care what we call it. You know, you could call it apples over bananas or whatever. Um, it doesn't matter that they're called P or Q. Um, but yeah, it's the P over Q thing. All the factors of the constant divided by all factors of leading coefficient. Let's do it. This is x to the fourth. So let's try to solve this polynomial without the aid of a calculator using the rational zero theorem to help guide us. So let's find the potential solutions for this polynomial by taking the factors of the constant, which would be plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2, and dividing it by all the factors of the leading coefficient. Thankfully, here is only the number 1, plus or minus 1. All right? So every combination is basically plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. These four numbers are the potential solutions that are rational for this. We know that there's four total solutions because the degree is four. So what I remember doing when I was in high school doing this stuff is you just, you could play a little guessing game. You could hope that one's a solution by synthetically dividing one in and seeing if it divides evenly. If it divides evenly, the remainder is zero. Therefore, we know that one would be a solution. Let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. All right, one, here it is, one. Coefficients, one, negative one, negative one, negative one, negative two. All right, if it divides evenly, the remainder here we expect to be zero. Let's try it out. Drop the one, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, unless I'm wrong, <laughs> This is not a solution. So one is not a solution, so it's out. Let's try negative one. Let's take all this off. The joys of the uh, dry erase. Don't have to write it all over. Negative one, here we go. Again, if it divides evenly, the remainder will be zero. If the remainder is zero, that means negative one divides evenly. That means negative one is one of our four solutions. Let's hope. Drop the one. Negative one, that's multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Nice, we found one. So negative one is one of the solutions of this polynomial. So now we could write this whole thing in factored form. Let's do that. Okay, we have plus or minus one here, plus or minus two. One of the solutions is negative one, so that's the factor of x plus one. This is the factor, hiding within it, solution, negative one. The remaining factor is the result of the division. Here it is. Let's look at it together. This is the remainder, ascending order, constant, x term, x squared, x cubed. And would it also make sense, think it through, that if you pull out an x minus 1, it would have to be x cubed over here, because when you multiply x minus 1 times x cubed something, that results in x to the fourth when you multiply through. So it would make sense that the remaining factor would be third degree if this is first degree and the original problem was fourth degree. Hopefully that makes sense minus 2x squared plus x minus 2. Now there's a couple things we can do here. I'm looking at this and based on our previous videos, this does factor called factor by grouping. Factor by grouping. So anytime you can see a factoring as one of your solutions or one of your solution processes, I say go for it. You could factor this by grouping, taking greatest common factor out here and here and combining the two. You can try that. But pretending that it couldn't factor, because future problems may not always be factorable, we can continue to break this down, okay? The, the traditional term for this, the official term is writing it as a depressed polynomial. <laughs> I always got a kick out of that. You're writing it as a polynomial that's 
basically going to high school every day and trying to deal with their life, a depressed polynomial. <laughs> okay, polynomial, don't, write, don't worry. We're going to write you in depressed form, but we actually want you to be depressed in this case. In this case, the synonym for depressed is writing it as factors, all right? So don't feel so bad, polynomial. So we haven't tried 2 and negative 2. Let's div synthetically divide 2 and negative 2 to this, all right? And see if it divides evenly. Therefore, we can continue to factor this down, to break it down. So let's be systematic. And we'll now divide 2 into here, right? Because that's a remaining solution. We don't want to divide 2 into this because that doesn't really help us continue to break down the polynomial in factored form. Now that we have one factor, we're happy. We have one solution over here. You can even write it. x equals negative 1. 1 down, 3 to go. Let's continue to break this down to find factors hiding within it. All right? Hopefully that makes sense to you. Let's put a 2 here. I'm just trying to factor in 2. Divide in 2. 1, negative 2. 1, negative 2. Here we go. Drop. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add, multiply, add nice. There it is. So now we conclude that 2 is a solution, meaning a factor is x minus 2. All right, we can bring down x plus 1 to keep it all together as a family. And the remaining factor is hiding right in here. Constant, uh, this is the, the remainder, constant, x term x squared. x squared plus 1. How about that? So we're continuing to depress this polynomial down. Solution, solution, x equals positive 2. So 2 down, 2 to go for 4 total. Here they are. x squared plus 1 equals 0. We can just go ahead and solve this straight up. Minus 1 both sides, minus 1 both sides. Here we go. We'll get x squared equals negative 1. Square root, square root. And we'll get x equals plus or minus i. x equals plus or minus i. There you go. All four solutions, there they are. Using the rational zero theorem to guide us. In part two of this video, which is coming right up, I'm going to actually solve an even more difficult one. All right, same process, but just more complex, more involved for some of the more difficult problems that you'll be facing. All right, thanks so much for watching. I hope this helped, bye.